Hey everyone, now more than ever, passive income investors are looking at dividend stocks as an attractive option. I think that's going to be heightened in 2024 because the central bank recently announced that they might be lowering interest rates in 2024. If they do that, then government bond yields are going to offer lower yields. And so that's going to make dividend stocks look more attractive because the dividend yield compared to the government bond yield is going to look more favorable. Already, the 10-year government bond has fallen in terms of yield that it offers from 5% to a little bit less than 4%. That's a big drop off already in yields. And so passive income investors might shift their attention to dividend stocks in 2024. So with that being said, is RTX an excellent dividend stock to buy for 2024? Well, let's answer that question in this video by looking at the company and its prospects, its longer term history in terms of revenue, cash flow and profitability, and then look at its valuation to answer if passive income investors should buy RTX stock. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So one of the things that I really like about defense companies like RTX is that their revenue comes with, with deep, deep backlogs, meaning that they have orders for years and years and years to come. They secure contracts and they get orders and they take years to build out these orders. And so for that reason, RTX has built up a $190 billion backlog. That's massive. So they can produce this production for years before they run out of the backlog. And while they're doing that, they're still getting orders refilling that backlog, right? 13% backlog growth year over year. 75 billion of that is just defense goods, right? They make innovative defense products and that's been more critical than ever now with the geopolitical issues going on, the Russian invasion in Ukraine, the war in Israel, and on and on. And that's created an urgency for governments to bolster their military capabilities and RTX is in position to supply that need, to fulfill that need. And so it's in a good position in terms of demand for its products and it's got a strong backlog and customers and investors can feel good about the company's prospects over the next few years. So that being said, if we were to look at RTX's revenue over the last five years, we could see wild fluctuation in the beginning due to the acquisitions that it made. I showed you a portfolio of its products. It's a combination of three companies, Pratt & Whitney, Raytheon, and the other company, I forget the name. Let's go back and see it. Pratt & Whitney, Collins Aerospace, and Raytheon. So it's a combination of three companies that through acquisitions have come together to form RTX. And so that makes the revenue picture look a little bit wonky. But if you just look at its organic growth, the company's got strong organic growth demand for its products, right? If we exclude the impacts of acquisitions and divestitures, organic demand for its products remains strong and are in fact increasing because of the geopolitical factors I mentioned earlier. I mentioned that RTX is a interest of passive income investors and it offers a dividend yield of 2.91%. Now this is lower than what the government bond yield it's offering right now at around 3.95%. But remember, when you're investing in a dividend stock, you have the opportunity to benefit from the gains in the stock price. That's not available to bond investors. When you buy a government bond and hold it to maturity, you're going to earn the yield to maturity. If it's 3.95%, that's what you're going to earn if you buy and hold to maturity. With dividend stocks, if it says 2.91%, it's highly unlikely that you're going to earn 2.91% regardless of your investment time horizon, whether it be three years, five years, 10 years, or 20, you're probably going to earn something different than 2.91% because it's going to be a combination of your dividend yield 
and the change in the stock price. And the change in the stock price is going to be meaningful. And so you're going to experience something different than 2.91% return. Most often, if you're prudent about the dividend stocks you're buying, the capital gain will be positive. The stock price will increase over the next 5, 10, 15, or 20 years, so long as you're being prudent with your due diligence and not paying too much and buying stocks that are overvalued. That's why it's important to do the due diligence that we're doing here to look at the company's prospects, profitability, cash flow, balance sheet, and valuation to determine if we're getting a good value with RTX stock. So with that said, let's look at the balance sheet. RTX has total long-term debt of $35 billion with cash and short-term investments of $5.45 billion. Typically, this type of imbalance between cash and long-term debt, I would say is a risk, typically, but not for a company like RTX. Why do I say that? Because they have such a strong backlog of orders. They know they have orders to fulfill, and so the long-term debt is not truly an issue because they can fulfill those orders and generate cash flow. They've got demand already waiting for them. It's a matter of production. It's a matter of deciding where you raise the money needed for production, right? How do you want to balance between debt and equity to create the money, the working capital, the cash capital investment needed to produce the products you need to produce? And for that reason, long-term debt, not really a risk for RTX. The next thing I wanted to look at is cash flow from operations over the trailing 12 months. And at $7.8 billion in the most recent period, trailing 12 months, and increasing over the last couple of years, the company is in a good position in terms of generating cash flow. This seems like a number that is sufficient to pay down debt, and support a dividend. In fact, the company is also buying back a lot of shares of stock. It's said management says it's going to do some divesting of some of its portfolio of assets to raise more money for the buyback. And so the cash, the cash position is strong for the company and it's growing and it's improving. And the prospects are for even more infusions of cash as it looks at the portfolio of all of the products that it offers and selectively says, okay, let's sell this one, let's sell that one. It's not a part of our core going forward. And that's going to bring in cash that it can then use to buy back the stock or pay dividends and reduce that as well. So it's generating good cash and it's done that if we go back a decade, you know, it only briefly dipped below generating $4 billion dollars in cash flow from operations for a trailing 12 month period. But for the most part, it's generated on average between five and six billion in cash flow from operations, which is a healthy figure to be sure. And finally, let's look at valuation. RTX is trading at a forward price to earnings of 14.72. A reasonable valuation for a stock of its characteristics. It's not cheap and it's not expensive. I would say it's fairly priced, fairly priced. And so looking at all of the prospects going forward, deciding if RTX stock is a buy for 2024, I would say it's on the borderline. I would say it's on the borderline between a hold and a buy, closer to a hold. I would suggest waiting for a dip in the stock price to get in, to create a bit of a margin of safety, wait for a 5 to 10% pullback in RTX stock price from where it is currently trading at a forward PE of 14.72 before you enter. Otherwise, it's trading fairly priced, right? But, it, you know, you could do well buying stocks at fair prices and holding them for the long term. But just to create a margin of safety, I think it's better to buy stocks on the cheaper side of the equation you know not when they're fairly priced but when they feel a bit undervalued instead of fairly priced and that's the case here with rtx did you know that over 90 percent of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed
It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.